Are you a writer looking for the best possible strategy to advance your writing skills, but you're not sure what programs to use, how to set up your desktop, and how to move forward with your writing to be as effective as possible? In the Show Me How You Write series, we are hanging out with best-selling and award-winning authors who are showing you on screen exactly what they do, what their process looks like, so that you can pick what's going to fit best for you. Now keep in mind, each person's process will not be perfectly right for you, but you can grab different bits and pieces from different authors and compile it into the perfect scenario and strategy for you as you're writing to advance what you're doing and really grow inside of this industry. USA Today best-selling author J.J. King writes paranormal romance featuring alpha females and men who are strong enough to love and fight beside them. Today, she's going to show us how she keeps track of her progress and success in her writing business, how she streamlines her book plotting and keeps track of where she's at while she's working, how she uses dictation to help with her physical health and to get around writing blocks, and more. Let's take a look. J.J., show us how you write. Okay, so I actually write in Google Docs. I find it very convenient to be able to write wherever I am and not just have everything at home on my laptop. And I do that often. So I keep open two tabs and I have it all linked in um, right here. So I have my Omega Wolf Academy, Alpha Wolf. I have everything right here and I can just go into it and open what I need. Um, so right now I'm actually finishing up fall semester. That's book two of Omega Wolf Academy, um, my third wolf series. And how I lay it out is I have all of my release information right at the top. So I know where I am in the process. I have my word count, where I'm finishing, my percentage done. I have all my pre-order information right here. Um, I like to have everything right at the top so I can grab it easily and see. I have my link. Um, and then I work down into keeping a track of the days I wrote, the words I added, total word count. I am not a math person, <laughs> but I like I like numbers though when it comes to I'm the same way. Yeah, I like being able to see total word counts and how much I'm adding, but I as soon as I'm in math class and I'm a teacher too. <laughs> I'm a teacher, so if I get asked to come in and teach a math class, I'm like, ugh. But, Listen, I was a teacher. I feel the exact same way about this. Yeah. So, I mean, but meanwhile, if you look in my tabs, I have everything broken down for royalties, percentages, all that stuff. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's okay. Um, so after I go through all of this, just keeping track of where I am, then we get to the good stuff. And that's my plotting. And I like to keep, like I said, some people use Scrivener, they use all kinds of things. OneNote is really good as well. I just like to keep it simple. I format it like this. So a chapter, words, done, and details. So I do this for my entire book and I've done this for my last 10 books. Um, really able to keep a track of where things are, uh, what day. I started doing this a couple books back adding the date in um okay. super important because I found that I was getting a little confused with my timeline so by making sure that I have the dates in at the beginning of each chapter I can easily track my timeline right I think that's so a really smart idea yeah well I only figured it out a couple books back <laughs> <laughs> I actually started creating a calendar for my books and only in the last couple books so I feel you yeah, yeah, but it makes all the sense in the world because you start getting confused about how much time should have passed between last chapter and this one, yeah. right? Yeah, so it really does make sense and makes it a lot yeah. easier. Um, so I used to be a pantser, which um, for my first series, The Guardians, I can't believe I was a pantser <laughs> because there's this huge suspense mystery that actually ties up so amazingly in book three and I have no idea how I did that <laughs> none but some amazing things happened in that series like I chose an area in in Ireland that they were going to end up in and then I needed a flower to tie in some you know detail of the book and I found the flower and it just happened to only bloom in that area of, like it worked out I oh, don't know wow. Moments of genius. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> All accidental. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I do find now that I don't, you know, rest my laurels on those crazy moments where it all comes together. Um, I'm a plotter now. So especially since I'm doing longer series, like my Alpha Wolf Academy series is five books. And it's an expansion of my Guardian's world. So I really do need to create those book Bibles, which is what I consider this, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with my character details so that my character doesn't have blue eyes in one book and green (laughs) eyes in the next. That is problematic. (laughs) And it happens, right? People do that. Oh, for Um, sure. And I've I've actually made the mistake in this series. Um, I had one of my characters have gold eyes. Um, and I write wolves, so that makes all the sense in the world. But then another character had dark brown eyes with gold around the edges, and I should not have done that. It's too similar, and uh-huh. you know it messes stuff up. But anyway, I've done it. That's it. <laughs> we just embrace our mistakes afterwards. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I plot, and um, sometimes I only have a little bit of information per chapter like this. Um, because I really do know where I'm going with that chapter. Other times it's very short, um, like romantic scene. And then I'll go back when I'm writing it and fill in and plot out all of my beats for that so that I know. But um, the reason I do it like this is because, as you can see, I have these handy dandy headphones on. I actually have carpal tunnel. And right now it's not flaring up so I can type, but when it does, I really can't type. So I dictate. Which is amazing. And I am so excited that you dictate because I feel like this is something that can help a lot of people. So what program do you use to do your dictation and can we take a look at it? Absolutely. So I actually got started with um, just Googling what's the best dictation program. I had no idea. And I found out that Dragon Professional, so I have that down here, Dragon Professional was the one that a lot of people recommended. And then on Facebook, I actually found a group called Training Your Dragon, um, which is fantastic. They're all using Dragon. And it's amazing um, the tips that they have in there, how to get used to it, because When we start typing, we train our brain to put our fingers on a keyboard and as fast as we can think or faster, the words come out, right? Uh But how do you do that when you're an adult and you're training yourself to do a new thing? Um, It's a little hard. So I had to, uh, it took me months to come up with how to do it, how to train my brain into um, saying, especially the punctuation. It is not always easy. No. Um, But I've gotten used to it. It's amazing. But some people, some people can do 10,000 words a day this way. Um, Yeah. So, and they completely save their wrists and that's amazing, right? So (laughs) that's incredibly important because as authors, we do a lot of physical damage to our bodies. So dictation or using editing tablets instead of a mouse or trackpad, Mm -hmm. all things that are incredibly helpful. There's also a version of Dragon that you can just take with you. So if you want to go for a walk or uh, if you have Bluetooth, you can walk around your house and move and exercise and still dictate. I I can't. I can't do that. (laughs) I can't do that. (laughs) Um, I'm just picturing someone running on a treadmill and like pounding out the words too. Right. I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, your body would thank you so much, but I, I still need to see what I'm writing yeah on the page so I actually watch myself dictate um (laughs) which some people get past that and they can just dictate but some people also don't mind writing dirty and I don't mean (laughs) sexual (laughs) (laughs) but um having to go back in and do a lot of editing and I don't write like that I've always written exceptionally clean so I edit as I go I was going to ask, with the dictation program, do you find it is pretty good at not having errors in there as you speak? Or do you have to go back and clean a lot up? Um, I clean it up as I go. Okay. So I'm trying to think of a word. Okay. Let's just give it a shot. All right. Um, hi. <laughs> 
comma, this is JJ King speaking here. Period. So comma, you can see that JJ King came out in capitals, comma, which is a good thing. That's what we want. Period. But comma, sometimes if you say a name like comma in my book right now, comma, I'm using the word chase. Period. There, comma. Chase isn't capitalized, comma, because it's an actual word, comma, but in my book, it's a name, period. So, comma, I would say, comma, select chase. Uh, select chase. Three. Choose one, period. So then you saw that it changed it. It went in and changed it from a lowercase chase to an uppercase chase. And I can do that with any of my words. So I just turned it off. So don't keep dictating what I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can say select uh, write. <clears throat> if I meant to write R-I-T-E and it put in R-I-G-H-T. So that's why I like watching the words as I dictate them. So I can go back and change them right there. That's fantastic. I love that. And I love that you have the ability to change it as you go as well. Because for me, that would be a really big struggle to have to go and fix all that after the fact. So I would be glued to my computer screen too, making sure it's correct. Well, one of the issues is that um, if you're slurring your words at all, or <clears throat> excuse me, or if you just speak a little fast, it can, it can write down stuff that makes no sense. And <laughs> If you're not watching it and changing it right now, going back and trying to figure out what you were talking about is actually pretty difficult. <laughs> it takes time, so. Yeah, I've tried some not dragon related dictation, just like from my computer picking it up, but I found things to be very strange sometimes. Right? No, I don't know. And you can leave it there. <laughs> but it's not always picked up in editing too, right? Because... Sometimes the words are actual words, but then when you read it through, it just doesn't make any sense to the story or, you know, no. so it can slip through. So that's why I like to watch it. And, but it's very useful for me. I think that is a very good tip, especially if it is something that might not make sense later on. So that's yeah. fantastic. What else do we need to know about how you write on screen? Um, gosh, I... How I write, I am very, I'm plot driven, but I'm very descriptive driven. So for me, I do all of that while I'm writing. Um, I'm always in the senses. So if I'm writing a scene, I have my beats done out, what's going to happen. Um, and that helps me move through the scene. Um, and have action on every single page, which is very important to me that I want to have my readers at the end of the page knowing exactly what happened on every single page. And that by the end of the chapter, something is there to drive them on to the next chapter. That was a mistake I used to make. Like my characters would go to bed at the end of a chapter. And then of course my reader would also close the book yeah, go to bed, right? Yep. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore in my books, and it can annoy people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. but I keep them reading, right? But they read those books, so I make sure that I have action and a lot of stuff on each page. Um, and but I also write an incredible amount of detail. So for me. You know how that study came out, or I don't even know if it was a study or just a Facebook <laughs> post, <clears throat> excuse me, about how authors can hear or see their characters as they write, uh -huh. and that some people don't actually do that, or you have one or the other. I see it. I don't always hear it, what my uh -huh. characters are saying, but I see it. I see the whole room. So when my character is agitated, he'll run his hands through his hair, leaving his hair on end, or have shifty eyes, or pace the floor. Um, those are the details that are incredibly important to me. And I mean, my feedback and my reviews, they all say the same thing, that 
they feel like they were in the story with me that they could like follow as if they were right there. So that's important to me, right? So I don't go back to add that in. I do it all in the moment. So I think that's really important. That's how I write as well. I make sure I get it all in there the first go and then I clean mm. up whatever later on, but I don't go back and add in detail later. And I feel like for a lot of writers, that's going to be very important too, but you're also going to have the opposite where people like to kind of get those bare bones in then yeah. it out from there. But I kind of like that this is how you do it because we're very similar with how we write. That's Speaking good. Of which, let me talk to you real quick about your writing location. So I know you said you like to write in Google Docs because you like to take it on the go. So mm -hmm. you typically have one location in which you do the bulk of your writing or do you just literally do it wherever you are on your phone, on your computer, on a tablet? Like, what do you do? Well, <laughs> I moved to a new home and decided it was time for me to have a big girl office. <laughs> so <laughs> I set up my office, um, put my laptop there and immediately struggled to write any words, <laughs> <laughs> which is horrible. I was, you know, so proud. Um, I also design covers and I can do that perfectly well in my office, um, at my desk, but I was wondering about it. Like, why am I so stuck in this book? And I came out <laughs> with my laptop and sat where I am right now in my recliner and just started dictating and the words started to flow again. This is very annoying. <laughs> I did all that work to set it up. And I mean, realistically, uh, this is not a good place for my back. You know, like it's not a great place to write when you're going to be doing so much of it. I do need to get myself to start writing in my office, but <laughs> for the sake of this book, <laughs> I'm doing it here. <laughs> what do you have to do? Yeah. Um, and I've done this since my, my little boy was small. Um, because I could write while he was in the room with me playing. Um, it stopped when I had to start dictating because obviously I'm writing romance and the book I'm writing right now is reverse harem. Like I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't be dictating things like, you know, sex scenes around my child. Right. So, but when I can type, when my wrist is fine, I do that. Um, and he likes just being around with me. Right. So, uh -huh. yeah, but I do write on the go. Like I said, I'm a teacher and I'm not a full-time teacher. So I do substitute. Um, or if I'm in a regular day and I have a prep, I like to fit some words in. I don't sit down and just pound out 3000 words a day. I break it down into smaller chunks and that's much more feasible to me. Um, so I will recess, recess will come and I'll write 500 words. Right. So that's how I like to access it all over the place. And I do write on my phone, but I don't type it out. I dictate onto my phone, um, just using like a little app, a little dictation app, not dragon, um, just like a memo note. And so I will dictate and then I will send myself those words and pop it into my document. So. That's how I worked back when I was teaching as well. Any recess, any <laughs> prep, like I, I was writing during my lunch break. I had food in one hand and Got I was on my iPad with the other. <laughs> well, when you've got a story in your brain and it really wants to come out, that's what you think about. And like, I've had people ask me like, why aren't you just sitting down in the staff room talking to other people? And I'm like, I was like, my characters need, <laughs> they need to get out. <laughs> I, I am socializing. It's just with my characters. Yes. <laughs> I feel that on a deep level. <laughs> Authors will understand. Yes. <laughs> so I want to ask with your specific type of writing, with the way that you plot it and the way you lay out your word count and what's going to happen and how you write your book through dictation, who is this style of writing good for? Who's this going to be a good fit for to succeed with writing? Everybody. Um, anyone who is struggling to um, figure out their writing style. This is just a very basic way to keep track of it, to help yourself. <clears throat> um, like I said, even with the dates that's in there, keep track of your story so that you're not messing up and, and going in, you know, fiddling with your details, right? Keeping them tra uh, track of them. Um, anyone's going to get like going in and doing beats. That's so important. 
anyone who is a pantser, even if you can put in some beats per chapter, like five beats per chapter, and maybe you don't understand what a beat is. A beat is just your direction. Like um, it can be as simple as <clears throat> this character gets mad at that one and is physical about it. Like they're showing their anger, anger physically. Um, I personally sometimes go in and put a lot more detail in than that. Sometimes I don't. Um, my best friend, um, Candace Osmond, she's an author too, an amazing author. Her beats for a book of 60,000 words can be 20,000 words. Like, it's intense. I don't do that. <laughs> but it works amazingly well for her. Um, she can whip through a book. Like, when it's time to actually write the book, it flies out of her. Because she's already got it all laid out. Right? So... Um, I do often let my characters change things up. They take it in their own direction. <laughs> um, and I just follow along. But the basic outline and the beats are there to help me stay more on track, especially because it's a longer series. Um, but I think everyone really would benefit from plotting this way. But as for Dragon, I mean... <laughs> I've seen authors say that dictation wasn't real writing and I didn't used to be offended by that, but then I started realizing that there are so many authors out there who don't have the ability to use their wrists or they're in bed or they're traveling all day for work. Um, it's an ableist view to say that one type of writing is better than the other or that um, the way you write is the only way to write. There are many ways to write and dictation helps people achieve that. So I think it's, it's an amazing way to, to work and to, and to write your books if you can do it, because it does take training your brain to say those things, right? Like we're not used to saying comma, open quote. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. All right, it does take a bit of training, but I mean, there are a lot of people who can really use this. So. And I feel like that's really important to say too, because sometimes in the book industry, we will have some of these biases. Some people don't love ebooks, some people don't love audiobooks, and people have things to say about that, as well as the way that we're writing. So, whether you're yeah. writing by hand or you're typing or you're dictating, you can still write your book. So it's let's still back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No matter how you get there, you still have your novel at the end, which is pretty amazing. Speaking of which, before I let you go, I want to ask real quick about your books. You told us a little bit about them, but Love what are Well, um, I write mostly wolf shifters. So I'm just going to shut this down because I am blocking everything with it. Um, I write Wolf Shifters and I had started out, my first series was a series called The Guardians. And that's my backdrop right here, uh, Blood of Eden. And I, oh my gosh, it took me like seven years to write this book. It was, was, I guess at the time, I didn't know I could write a book. This was the story that I wanted to tell. I was very influenced by Kelly Armstrong's Bitten um, book. Have you ever read it? Um, anyway, so I'm sorry, I muted myself. My dog was barking. I have not read that. <laughs> no, it's amazing. She's a Canadian author. And I only realized that afterwards and I'm Canadian. Um, but she wrote the first book that I had ever seen where there was a female alpha character. Um, they're not necessarily the alpha of the pack, although hers turns out to be spoiler alert. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, but, um, I'd always seen these very alpha dominant male characters in Wolf Shifter World. And while they can be a lot of fun, um, I always found the women a little meek compared to them. And I wanted to write strong females. So I started doing that. And, um, after I finished Guardians, which is a trilogy, it's a longer trilogy. Um, the books are kind of thick, like 80,000 words. I did something with um, Greek mythology. I went and followed my love of Greek mythology. I've always been fascinated with Medusa um, and Hecate. And I just went that way. And I did a series called The Wronged about Greek monsters. Um, but my, I don't know, I always get being drawn back to wolves. It's kind of where my heart is. 
Um, so I took my Guardian's World and I expanded it into a new adult series called Alpha Wolf Academy, which is the second one here. Um, and this is a five book series. So it's my wolves go to university when they're around 21 years old. So it's a little bit older that moves them from young adult into new adult. And it can be a little sexier. So that's nice. Um, so this follows Elena Jensen um, as she goes to university in, uh, in, well, in Quebec, really, in Quebec, Canada, um, at Alpha Wolf Academy, the best alpha, our best wolf academy in the world. And then um, as I started expanding my worlds, I started getting interested in reverse harem, which a lot of my friends, my author friends were writing, and they were doing such amazing things with reverse harem. And I wondered how could I incorporate it, incorporate it into my world because my wolves are fated mates, which means that they meet their mate. They have that mate. That's one, that connection's right there. They don't necessarily need to fall in love at first sight with their mates, but there's a connection between them that draws them together. Um, but then I realized if you're expanding any world, there's always going to be outliers. There's going to be your oddball cases. So that brings me to my pink haired girl right here, um, Lexi. And she goes to Omega Wolf Academy and she finds that she has not one, not two, but three mates. And so she's dealing with that right now. Yeah. So this is what I like to write. <laughs> Wolves. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all of your advice. I had muted myself because it's getting a little loud around here. So <laughs> that one. But this was fantastic. Any final thoughts on writing to our listeners? Um, I try to write every day. Um, I don't always achieve it, but I do find that if I stay in my story on a daily basis, I get pulled back into it more often. There's been times that I've allowed myself not to write for a couple days and then getting back into it is always harder. So even a hundred words, because a hundred words, usually you don't stop there. You keep writing, you get up to 500, you get to a thousand because you get sucked back into your story. Um, so keep your story close. That's my best advice. Keep your story close um, until you finish it. And I've gone back and forth between um, series before writing one and then finishing it, writing a book in the next. I don't think I'll be continuing that process because like I said, keep your story close, finish it follow your characters and let them speak and get it out. Remember, not every system will be the perfect fit for you. So implement what you can from JJ's system and hit subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the other processes from other incredible authors to make the perfect fit for you. I'll see you in the next episode.